Madame la Chancelière, j'ai l'honneur de vous présenter Monsieur John Sickert, qui s'est distingué par son leadership innovant dans le secteur de la gestion de la chaîne d'approvisionnement. Young John Sickert's future looked very different from what it became when he dropped out of high school to be a rock and roll drummer. But his eventual wife, Pina, guided him back to academics, and his exceptional performance in math at CGEP set him on his path. Après avoir obtenu son diplôme en informatique à l'Université Concordia en 1988, M. Sicard a travaillé comme architecte logiciel au sein de plusieurs entreprises avant d'entrer à Kinexis en 1994. Au fil des ans, il a gravi les échelons des divers services de l'entreprise, jouant un rôle clé dans l'élaboration de solutions dans la gestion de la chaîne d'approvisionnement. Since 2016, when Mr. Sickert became CEO, Kinexis's revenues have more than quadrupled, benefiting from its clients' need to plan for the wildly fluctuating market forces caused by the pandemic. Today, Sickert leads 2,000 employees in more than 25 countries. Mr. Sickert says he relies on the knowledge of his staff and fosters an environment where everyone learns. If I make all the decisions, no one learns, he says. And when you stop learning, you start dying. Mr. Sickert encourages neurodiversity in staffing as a pathway to innovation through the Kinexis Autism at Work program. Nearly 2% of the company's workforce is on the autism spectrum. The company has won multiple top employer awards and has committed to sustainability by signing the United Nations Global Compact. Mr. Sickert announced in August that he will retire at the end of this year. Madame la Chancelière, au nom du Sénat et du Conseil d'administration de l'université, j'ai le privilège et l'honneur uh, de vous présenter M. John Sickert afin que vous lui décerniez un doctorat en sciences honoris causa. I now ask Dr. Sickert to give his convocation address. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, Mr. President, and Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class, family, and friends. It's a privilege to be here with you to celebrate the remarkable accomplishments of this graduating class. Congratulations to all of you. This is a momentous milestone. I would urge you to create as vivid a memory of it as you can. Your future self will thank you for it. I'd like to start with some heartfelt gratitude to my wife. Pina, who's here with me uh, today. Frankly, I wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for her. We met in 1982 in a rock and roll bar not that far from here called The Warehouse. Uh, I was 20 then, and I looked a lot different than I do now. Let's just say uh, very long, curly hair, kind of like Peter Frampton, for those of you who would remember. Uh, and I so wanted her to be impressed with my vocation at the time. I remember shouting in her ear, I'm a drummer for the rock band, The Gothic. And uh, hoping she'd be impressed, but alas, that wasn't the case. Uh, thankfully, she saw through my rough edges and supported me as I shifted my focus from music to mathematics 
and computer science, and as it turns out, I was pretty good at those subjects, better than, than dr being a drummer, I'll say that. We're proud parents of two amazing, uh, two amazing young men, Alex and Nicholas, both incredibly accomplished. Thank you, Pina. Without you, I'm not me. Now, I'd like to say a few words about this great institution, Concordia University. Receiving that acceptance letter was one of the, the happiest days of my life. Concordia took a chance on me as I was coming in as a mature student. And I'll, I'll, I'll never be, uh, you know, I, it's hard to say words that, of gratitude uh, for that opportunity, but thank you, Concordia, for taking that risk on me uh, and giving me that opportunity. And thank you for the honor you bestow on me today. As, uh, as I prepared my remarks for the graduating class, I thought to myself, what, would I, what do I wish I would have known back then, knowing what I know now? So here are just a few lessons. Hopefully some of these might resonate with you. Number one, be courageous with your career. Never disqualify yourself from an opportunity. You may, you may not feel fully qualified for a job that you've never done, but remember, many have come and succeeded before you. When I was asked to leave the software engineering, the software engineering team and join sales, I was terrified, and rightfully so, the toughest job I've ever had. But if I had said no, my career may have been stalled then. So embrace that fear. It often leads to extraordinary growth. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's the willingness to step forward despite it. Number two, learn the language of your benefactors. As engineers, we often become enamored with our technology, forgetting to articulate its value to those who would benefit from it. Don't fall in love with what your technology does. Fall in love with what your technology means. It sounds subtle, but it really is not. It will be the difference between designing and developing technology that's academically interesting versus technology that is, has great value to society at large. Number three, and this is probably my favorite, humility is a, humility is a superpower. Though it's not universal, humility can be cultivated. Arrogance, well, that can derail a career in a hurry. A great mentor of mine, Ron Matricaria, once told me I should apologize at least once a day. This practice fosters humility and reminds us that we're all imperfect beings striving for extraordinary achievements together. So, so make humility your superpower. And last but not least, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Now that's a, a phrase attributed to the late great Peter Drucker, but it resonates deeply with me. It means that how we work together is always going to be more important than what we do together. A team without a healthy culture will struggle to succeed. It's essential to cultivate a positive environment and do so intentionally. Reflect on your experiences here at Concordia, for example. The camaraderie you've built with classmates and professors is a microcosm of what you'll find in the workplace. A healthy culture nurtures innovation, creativity, collaboration, and you'll know it's working when anxiety, anxiety and stress are rare and joy becomes abundant. Thank you again for allowing me to share this moment with you and congratulations again. I wish you great health, great success, and above all, an abundance of joy in your life. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Seekert, for your inspiring and fascinating remarks. And graduating class, remember, be courageous and be humble. <laughs>